everybody. Happy Thursday. We have arrived to day 11. That means there's only one day left after today. Wow. And when I started this, it felt like Christmas was a really long way away. And now here we are, day 11. All right, let's make sure I'm in the right place. All right, good. Hope you guys are having a good week. Um, I know we went, we had a basketball game last night and then my older daughter and I stopped by Walmart on the way home to find puff corn, which by the way, we found a bunch of puff corn at our neighborhood Walmart. <laughs> Anyhow, it was wall to wall people at Walmart and I, our Walmart's not ever like that. Our Walmart's calm and quiet. And I thought, oh my gosh, everybody is feeling the crunch. I was going to get, um, one more gift card for Addie's coach and the, the little gift card kiosk was like swarmed with people. <laughs> so I know all of you are probably feeling the pinch. You, I, as we get closer, I'm like, oh God, just, you know, let me be done. Let me be done with Christmas presents and baking and shopping. And who did I forget this year? Who, you know, ah, hopefully you guys are checking things off your list and getting them done. Today, we're going to do um, two projects using the merriest moments. Um bundle. I've mentioned to you that this one um, passed me by. I wish that I had not missed it. It's super cute. Um, I love the fonts and it has a ton of images. It also has some great dies, which I'm going to show you in a little while. It has, a, it has two really big dies, um, but then it also comes with an embossing folder and it's in stock and it's carrying over. So that is exciting. Finally, <laughs> boy, there's a lot that's sold out, but this is not. Yay. All right. I'm going to go through a couple of things um, before we get started. Hi, everybody who's jumping on. It's good to see you. I forgot to post a reminder today, but I figured by day 11, you guys know what we're doing, right? Um, the all-star tutorial bundle. I haven't talked about this in a while, which also means I haven't emailed it. In probably a week so I'm gonna set it over by my computer and do that this afternoon that you get this for free when you spend $50 with me or more um, with an online order um, there are 12 of us in this group we each do one tutorial each month and we all use the same products so this one has 12 projects using the bloom where you're planted suite um, so it's all bloom where you're planted they're all videos um, they also have the measurements, the supply list, photos, links to the videos. So I've been doing this for several years. I think maybe going on like four years and it is so fun. Um, we've gotten a little more organized and now we're doing videos like I mentioned and we focus on one product. So if you have the bloom where you're planted and you're looking for some ideas, this is a great one to get. Um, I offer this for free as a thank you with any order over $50. I also sell it in my PDF store for $15. Um, it's an immediately, it's a, an immediate download, which means my website automatically emails it to you. I, they do it behind the scenes. I don't have to do it. Um, when you buy it, sometimes it doesn't arrive. Sometimes it goes to spam. Who knows? If that ever happens to you, please email me and I will have it resent. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about this is that we do the, these in six month, six month chunks. That's hard to say. So this one started, I think, what was it? J June, July, August, September, October, November. No, so it was July, July to December. And the next one will be January to June. Um, we open subscriptions up twice a year the very first month of each six month round. So that will be January. If you want to subscribe to this, it gets delivered to your mailbox on the first of every month, your email inbox. And um, when you subscribe, you pay for five months and you get the six month for free. Now, those of you that order with me frequently, you don't want to subscribe because you're going to get it for free. Um, but this is for people who are already demonstrators or who have demonstrators and the, you don't want to order from me, but maybe you buy a lot of PDFs. This would be a great option. You can uh, subscribe, pay. You can either pay in full up front all five months or you can pay monthly and it's uh, through PayPal. It, it automatically charges you. Um, and then you get the six month for free. So if you're interested in the subscription, be on the lookout. I think next week is when we 
we all try to do the subscription on the same day. I think it's usually around the 22nd. I'll have to double check. But for sure, you have all of January to subscribe. Um, so if you miss a subscription or if you're a current subscriber and you want to resubscribe, um, be on the lookout for that, okay? Um, do I have the scheduled list of stamps we will be using? I, I, you know, we voted. We all voted on what we wanted to use. I don't know if we have it scheduled yet, but it, I will have it by the time I open subscriptions to let you know. It'll all be from the upcoming um, spring catalog. I'm pretty sure. I don't think any of it's from the annual. I think it's, it'll all be the spring catalog. Um, Terry, Club Create does not qualify because um, for Club Create, you're only paying $39. Um, and this is free with a $50 purchase. And Nine dollars of Club Create is shipping anyway. So if you add on to your Club Create subscription, if you add on the bundle or adhesive or whatever, yes, then you do qualify for it. Okay, so that is that. And let's see what else. Oh, new Paper Pumpkin subscription has opened. Um, if you love Valentine's Day, this is their Valentine's kit. It will be your January kit. Um, I will have the Paper Pumpkin link up here or down there after the video. Um, this one is, let's see, it says, contains enough supplies to create 10 cards and coordinating envelopes. Perfect for all love occasions. I believe it has boxes too. Um, I can't remember now. Includes an exclusive stamp set, create matching treats with the coordinating kisses and hugs many treat boxes. Okay, so that's it. They have an add-on um, treat boxes. So they come with the cards but if you want to make treat boxes, you can add those on. So really cool. Valentine's Day is really cute. So uh, make sure you check that out. If you want it, make sure you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. All right, last chance list. As you guys know, things are flying off the shelf <laughs> um, like crazy. Uh, make sure you're keeping an eye on that. I am just amazed by what's already gone. There's a lot. I don't think we've ever had a time when this much has sold out, um, which is... I don't know if it's just because we all love it all so much or if it's because of supply chain issues. I don't know, but make sure you double check your list. Um, okay, so today is day 11. If you have missed any of days 1 through 10, here are all the projects that we have made. That's a lot. Two each day. Um, mostly one card and one 3D project. Um all of it is on my blog. If you go to pinkbuckaroo.com, you'll see it all come up. You can click on whichever day you're interested in. All the videos are uploaded there as well, as well as YouTube. Um, there aren't PDFs for this, but they I do have the measurements listed on each blog post. Tomorrow will be the last day, and we're going to be doing, um, forgot what it's called, Delivering Cheer. And I am pulling in new paper from the spring catalog tomorrow just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek. So make sure you join me tomorrow. will be the very last day and uh, it'll be fun. Okay, how about door prizes? Um, this, this door prize is the sparkle of the season. You have to go to pinkbuckaroo.com, scroll down to the bottom, towards the end, there's a link that says click here, go at, answer a Christmas question, give me your address, and then I'll pick a random winner each day. This winner is Judy Cruz or Cruz. Bruce, Judy, I have your mailing address, Judy. I will be sending it to you. Congratulations, Judy. Th these are sold out too, so yay. Um, what's my, oh, I've got another sold out. I've got another sold out bundle today to give away. This one is the Merry Snowflakes bundle with those stitched snowflake dies that are gone, that sold out without warning. So if you want to be entered to win, go over there today. I think today I'm asking you about your... Christmas Eve tradition. All right, so make sure you do that by this time tomorrow if you want to be entered to win. All right, uh, that is it. The last thing I want to tell you is that this week I'm not doing any um, free make and takes with orders, but I am giving, I am sending a gift, a special gift that looks like this to anybody who spends over $50 um, with me and uses the host code. Um, this I only have 25 of these and I already have half of them spoken for. So if you want one of these, it has the bedazzle paper. It has the um, little cute oven mitt and a pack of 10 cards, handmade cards. So 
if you want this, make sure you get your order in um, before they're gone. I'm I'm saying until through Christmas, um, but if I get more than 25 orders between now and then, then I'll then it'll be done. So, but anyway, right now we're about halfway, halfway, halfway gone. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys around, and we will get started. Um, you guys, one of you asked about that weird question on the prize thing down at the bottom. Who knows? I don't know. All you have to do is just answer the, the question and enter your address. There's weird stuff at the bottom, like random one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. I think I deleted it. I don't know where that came from. So don't worry too much about that. As long as you enter your mailing address, that's all that matters. Okay. So we're going to start with a card. And, um, like I mentioned, this, this bundle has some really cool features, right? So it has this embossing folder and the embossing folder is, has a lot of detail. And then you have these two bigger dies. This one will cut out the outline there like that. Okay. And what I saw online is that you can put your die, if I can find the right setup, let's see, is it on this side? Anyway, you can put this die like this in your big, sh I mean your big shot, your cut and emboss machine and run it through and it will cut and emboss at the same time. So I didn't do it like that, but I also didn't use this die, I used this die. And I did try to do it like that with this die and and I did not like the results. So this one, the, you know, this one has a lot more like holes and cutting surfaces and all of that. And it, it slides around, it doesn't lock in. So I don't really feel like I can recommend that. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could try it. It has so much detail, the embossing. And this die, you can see, I mean, it cuts out all these things. What I found is that it you didn't get as much detail when you put them through together. Um, I do know that this works really well, this one, um, but I didn't use this one. This one actually sits down on there. It doesn't slide around. So I won't tell you where, who I watched that said you could use this one, but I don't know for sure, but I do know for sure this one you can run through like that and it, it works really well. Okay. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that twice, but we're also gonna do some stamping. And I used some really bright and fun colors for this card. You can tell here at the end, I'm like, I'm not sick of Christmas or Christmas projects, but I just need a little, <laughs> some variety. Um, you know, some, uh, some a change in my colors and, uh, you know, little, little, less Christmassy, standard Christmas, I guess. And so I'm going with some of my favorite colors. We're gonna do polish pink and granny apple green and daffodil delight. So this flower is the bigger flower and I'm gonna stamp it twice like that. And then we've got the smaller flower, okay? We're gonna do that one twice. I have enough room on my paper. And then we're gonna do, we need two of the flower centers, which we're gonna do in Daffodil Delight. Aren't they cute? I love the way these are drawn. Something about these images are just cute and very um, almost cartoon-like. I really like them. And then I'm gonna do four of these in granny apple green all right now for the sake of the video i cut them all out because it's a lot of cutting so here they are i do want to point something out to you though okay um the flowers for example are not symmetrical well i just happened to put it down the right place but if you lay it down you have to keep rotating it until you find where it lines up um, I had a customer a few
few years ago who wanted to return a punch because she said it didn't match the flower, but she thought that the flower was symmetrical. And, I, and then when I showed her that you could rotate it and then the flower would line up, she was like, oh, okay. So don't get frustrated if you feel like the die doesn't match. You just have to keep rotating it until you find it. And then you kind of learn like that petal looks really kind of different than all the others. And you can tell that it, it's that petal. So then it's easier. So anyway, don't get frustrated. Um, just keep turning, turning, turning and you'll find it. Okay, so now let's use that, that really cool die and that embossing folder so I can show you what's really magical about this set. Um, we're gonna use, like I said, Granny Apple Green and, and did I put my, I need my other plate. Here it is, I put it away. You're gonna take, everything off okay just plate one and the first thing I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna emboss first I don't know you know does it do you guys feel like you should emboss first or you should cut first I feel like I want to emboss first and then line the um, die up with the embossed image that works best for me Maybe doing it the opposite way works better for other people. But for me, that's how I'm going to do it. Now, look at those dots. Isn't that really cool? Look, I got a little bit short here. And, you know, while we're here, let's do the other one, too, because we're going to do one for the second project, too. So if you don't cut it out, you have all these really cute dots in the background. Let me make sure that I get this. It's exactly like four and a fourth by five and a half. So you wanna get it in there just right. Okay, run that through. Now, we're gonna get this one. And again, remember there are two here. So if you do this one, you're gonna get more of a solid outline. Okay, like that. But I wanted to cut out all those pieces. So I'm gonna use this other die. And you wanna put back your other plates, all your other plates. And then we're gonna lay this on here and really wiggle it around. Look at all your points, your top, your bottom, your side. Make sure everything is lined up. Yeah, that looks good. And then carefully put your top plate on. And then there we have it. See how it cuts? It doesn't just cut, this one doesn't just cut the outline. You need to go, I, I've mentioned our CEO, Sarah Douglas. She does Facebook Lives and she has a Facebook Live where she makes some family Christmas cards with a photo in the middle. And she just used this die and it, they were gorgeous. So if you're looking for more ideas, find Sarah Douglas on Facebook. If you Google Merriest um, Moments, her video will be one of the first ones that comes up. All right, we're gonna do this again. This is for the second project. I'm just doing it while I have the cut and emboss machine over here. Wiggle it and then you'll feel it. Once it sits down in the right spot, you'll feel it. It's kind of like a puzzle piece that fits down in there. All right, so now we are done with that. Take that one and we'll put it on the other tray for the next project. All right, this, um, this set of dies also has a, a stitched rectangle. Uh, Rhonda says she cuts first and then embosses. You guys will have to try it and see which way you like the best. Um, I, I've heard chatter, or I've seen chatter online, why, which one way is the best. I think it's just a matter of preference. All right, so this stitched rectangle is from this set. And I've cut it out in basic white. I'm just gonna stamp the sentiment. Isn't that beautiful, that font? I really like that font. All right, now let's assemble our flowers. And you know I'm gonna use the dimensionals, of course. I guess I could use regular dimensionals for this part, but. 
And you want to put those on so that the, the petals are, you know, not right on top of each other. They're, um, they alternate. These kind of stick out in the middle. And then another many dimensional, we'll put these Daffodil Delight centers there as well, like that. All right, now I have cut out a piece of polished pink designer series paper from the 2021 to 2023 designer series paper pack. There, it's the in color pack for this year. Put that with dimensionals. It's just a little bit bigger than the rectangle. And then we'll put the rectangle right in the center. I think pink and green, pink and bright green are a fun um, Christmas combo. Now I'm gonna take these two, let's do these first. I always end up doing this backwards and then I'm trying to squeeze things in behind. Okay. Let's see if we can get this glue to work. There we go. So I'm gonna slide that right there and slide this one right there. You know, any of my friends on here that do Facebook Live, do your comments disappear and you have to tap the screen to see them? That has been happening for weeks and weeks and weeks and I'm really tired of it. Like if I don't, if I'm just looking, it's not showing me anything. I have to tap the screen and then they all disappear. They all fade away. Why is that? Is it a setting that I have? Surely not. Hmm. I don't know. I guess I need to do some research on that. All right. Put this right here. Isn't that gorgeous? Like that. And then we're just going to use a basic white card base. few dimensionals in the middle. Jessica, it's a new update with Facebook. It's so annoying. Why would they do that? I mean, you can swipe to get rid of the comments. So why would they just have them disappearing? Oh, Debbie, you've heard other people having that same? Okay, well, good. Then at least it's not me. Why do they keep messing with it? I don't understand why they can't just leave something well enough alone. I can't download the video anymore. We used to be able to save it to your phone when you're done. Well, they've completely taken that option away. So if for some reason it got deleted or disappeared, then I don't have a copy of it on my phone, which is frustrating. Ugh. Anyhow, okay, a few rhinestones and there you have it, gorgeous. Right, isn't that beautiful? Why I haven't played with this before? I could have done a whole class on this bundle. I wish I had. Okay, there's project number one. Now project number two is going to coordinate beautifully with project number one. Um, we're gonna make this, and I don't really know what to call it. It's like a big um, fold over milk carton. I actually made this back in the summer for um, something we did with our team. And then I forgot about it. And I saw it just last week and I thought, oh my gosh, we need to make one of these. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. So this time I brought in Pool Party because I really wanted to use this Pool Party ribbon. The Pool Party ribbon, I don't think is sold out yet, but I think I saw that it was on low inventory, which means it'll be gone soon. All right, so this takes a full sheet of cardstock, eight and a half by 11. We're gonna score the long side at half an inch, four inches, five and three fourths, and nine and a fourth. Then you're gonna turn it on the short side and score it at three fourths of an inch, two and a half, and six and three fourths. Hopefully it's correct. I can tell it's correct. All right, we're gonna have to add in some score lines. Let me get my ruler and a pencil. I already have a bone folder. We're gonna add in these score, these diagonal score lines right here. But first, let's burnish all our lines, cut off the things that we need to cut off, and then we'll add those. 
Now I need to stamp something on the front of the box. And you guys, more times than not, I forget to do that before I actually assemble the box. So hopefully today I'll remember. Okay, so the first thing, hold on. Let me make sure I remember what I'm doing. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> have to remember what I'm doing. And I remember, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me look. Yeah, okay. We're gonna cut off. We're gonna cut off these top three and then this one on the outside, okay? We're gonna leave that top one up there as the fold over. Okay, so cut those three and then cut this one right here. All right, now on the side, you're gonna cut just the bottom one, the bottom skinny one. And then you're gonna wanna cut these apart. Okay, cut the corners. And then we're gonna add those score lines. It seems weird that we're not cutting any of this apart, but that's because that's the way it's gonna, it's supposed to be. See, it goes together like this, and then these, we want these right here to pinch. So grab your ruler and your pencil, and let's see, how wide are these? One and three-fourths, so that is three-fourths, um, what is that, five-eighths, seven-eighths? Seven-eighths and seven-eighths is one and three-fourths, right? So seven eighths, we're gonna make a, a mark at seven eighths. That's about halfway. Okay, and then take your, your you can use your bone folder, you can use your stylus, you can use your take your pick tool. And you're gonna draw a diagonal line from the bottom corner up to that tick mark at the seven eighths inch. Point. Okay, and one more. Like that. Now, you wanna make sure that you burnish those so that when you go to pinch those sides, it's gonna do exactly what you want it to do. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is use our our, you guys know I can never remember the name of this punch. Hold on, Detailed Trio Punch. I always wanna call it the Tri-Corner Punch. I don't know why. Let me make that straight. Okay, the, and I'm gonna round these. All right, so fold, you gotta fold in your side like that. And like that. Okay, so that is what it looks like. All right, we're gonna add some dots right here. I'm not gonna forget. We're gonna add some dots. If I can find my ink, which is right under here. This is just a texture stamp um, on uh, in this stamp set. There's another one too that you could use like three little dots. And you don't need to do a whole lot because most of our, our uh, focal point is going to cover it up. So you're just kind of on that edge right there is where you need to do that. Okay, so now get your adhesive. I think I'll use tear and tape for the sides. Tear and tape, Tombow, Stamp and Seal Plus. Gosh, look at that. I almost had it perfect length. Okay. And then fold over like that, okay? So there we go. See how those are gonna fold in? And that's gonna go over, but I gotta, I gotta adhere it. Let me see, why does that look like it's not straight? Hmm, okay, fold those in. This time I'm just gonna use this because it's easier down here. A Little bit of stamp and seal. If you're gonna put something heavy in your box, you wanna use tear and tape, Tombow, or Stamp and Seal Plus, but for the video, I'm just gonna do that. All right, so that's gonna fold over like that. 
And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna draw where I want my holes punched, like that. And grab your hole punch. We don't carry hole punches anymore, but you can find these all over the place. This is just, I think, my, what is that, a quarter inch hole punch. All right, then close it up and use your pencil to draw those lines on the inside. Okay, and punch there. Now, take your ribbon and first go through this part. This is a really cool way to keep your ribbon attached to your box. I just frayed that really badly. Okay, so like that. Then fill it with all your goodies. Fold over your box. Man, I'm gonna have to cut this every time. And you're gonna thread these up through here like this. Okay, see how I'm doing that? Uh oh, I gotta cut this off. And let's see if I can get it through that hole. There we go. Now, if your box is filled, it's gonna, it's gonna hold easier than this. See how I did that? Can you guys see? So then the recipient can open it like that, pull the ribbon out, and it'll still be attached to your box. All right, so let's set something on here so I can hold it down. And then you can just tie it. This would be a great box for your cracked corn, by the way. Found seven bags of cracked corn last night, and those bags are tiny, you guys. If you have bought that puff corn before to make it this year, the bags are tiny. I'm having to use one and a half bags in place of what was one bag last year. They are tiny, very disappointed, and a little bit more expensive than before. Okay, there we go. Now, let's decorate it. Remember we did this right here? Well, we're gonna cut off, we're gonna cut off the bottom edge and the right edge, all right? So that it can go right there. And we're gonna put that on with dimensionals. And I think I'll use my edges right here. Um, Kathy, um, if you go to my blog and you search crack corn, you'll find my recipe. It is the most addicting, delicious Christmas treat you will ever find. It is delicious. I make it every year and give it to the teachers and we've done it at my retreats. I've, sh I've shared the recipe lots of times. So just go to pinkbackeroo.com. That search field is up in the right corner and type in crack corn and you should be able to find it. All right, this time we're gonna use a Joyful Christmas. Same stitched white rectangle. I'm stamping it at the bottom to leave room for my flowers. All right, and this time I stamped the flowers twice in Pool Party and once in Petal Pink. And then I did um, the centers again in Daffodil Delight. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you guys like it. I love this one. All right. And then last but not least, we got to put the centers. This is a pretty big box um, compared to some of the boxes that we've made. This one holds, you know, bigger things, cookies or um, crack corn. All right. Did I lose the other center? Hmm, did it slide under somewhere? Well, I'm not cutting another one out for right now. <laughs> We're just gonna go with it. Pretend like there's a center there. Yeah, I lose them every day. I need to put them in a, in a little like dish or something. Hmm, well, darn it. All right, 
Let's put our white rectangle right here. I probably didn't need three, but that's all right. Like that. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that, Marilyn. And then we will put one pool party over here, one pool party over there. We'll pretend like that one has a flower center. <laughs> and we will put this one in the center. That one needs to come down a little bit, doesn't it? Like that. And ta-da! How cute, right? So cute. Now, this other one I did... Um, I used, this was that celebration paper from last celebration, that penguin paper. And then this is a large seasonal label and our cute little penguin. So cute. Oh, man, I'm going to catch my finger on that. I've got to find it. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to stamp and cut another one after we're done. Okay, well, you guys, that's it for today. What do you think about this bundle, Merriest Moments? How many of you have it? How many of you have overlooked it like I did? Thought, meh, and just passed it by, passed it by, passed it by. I wish I had not. I wish I had spent more time with it. It is adorable. And you know what? I think you could probably use it as non-Christmas. If you change that sentiment, I, I mean, wouldn't you think that that's non-Christmas? I, I would think so. All right, you guys, don't forget all orders between now and Christmas or when I run, before I run out, um, we'll get my fun little gift. Uh, make sure you use that host code. And tomorrow, look, I keep catching my finger on that, that <laughs> dimensional. I'll cut this one out when we're done. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow at two o'clock. Last day. Ah, oh, last day. All right, you guys, have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.